Thomas Palapatia's SPAC, Social Capital Hedosofia II, is actually acquiring Open Door. This was a well, Open Door is a real estate firm, which as we talk about tech changing the world, this is going to change the way perhaps you buy a house. Julia LaRoche, you, you actually know Chamath, uh, and what do you think of this move that they're making? Okay, so first of all, I just want to, uh, I think we really need to step back and give Chamath Palihapitiya a lot of credit for the recent wave of SPACs that we're seeing. He really has kind of pioneered the resurgence here and brought a lot of credibility to the space. You know, he brought Virgin Galactic to the public markets through a SPAC just about a year ago, I believe, Adam. Uh, so uh, there's been a lot of attention on the space. And of course, uh, he made an announcement this morning that through this IPOB vehicle that you're just referencing, they're bringing open door to the public markets. And let me just kind of give you a walk through to his thesis. He posted a one pager and this is a really about it's real estate, but all of the buying and selling online it, like, has touched every industry, yet real estate has really kind of been left behind here. But he points out that this company is so far ahead in the game. He's outlined five tailwinds for the uh, consumer real estate market. Just let me walk you through it. It, it relates a lot to millennials, actually. Um, one, the affordability issues, especially in big cities post-financial crisis, you really didn't see much in the way of development, really under development in terms of the supply. Uh, you also have the federal government eliminating that salt deduction tax, which is kind of causing a lot of folks to move out of some of the states uh, like New York and California, for example. Um, millennials, uh, I'm a millennial. I'm a, you know, we're, we're starting to get married, start families. Housing is becoming much more interesting. Uh, he points out that work from home because of the pandemic, that is here to stay. Another interesting trend. And of course, low interest rates from the Federal Reserve remaining in the foreseeable future. Um, a, bit, a couple more highlights here. Uh, the revenue for this company was $4.7 billion in 2019. He expects that this company by 2023 will make $9.8 billion. Of course, uh, if you look at the vehicle itself, um, the, the SPAC here, the shares were just popping on this news. And I was referencing uh, earlier just someone who's brought a lot to this space. So, of course, a lot of attention here on Chamath and I'm sure more to come in the future. And to Julia's point, I mean, this type of business that Open Door is in is enormously profitable. They're not the first ones to do it. Consider Zillow Offers, for example. That's a company that's been directly buying real estate as well, using the intel that they have on their website. If anything, they're the gargantuans in this space already on pace to become a $2 billion revenue business just for Zillow. That's partially the reason why stock of Zillow has been up so much in this late summer. But I think we also have to speak to the idea of SPACs as well. We've been talking about this concept uh, for a number, in a number of applications on this program over the summer. It seems like there's been a lot of renewed interest in this space. And I think that for a company like Open Door, where they're already at a multi-billion dollar valuation before deciding to team up with Palpatia here, I think we have to speak to the idea that this is less about the company not having the resources to go public with a company that large, this late stage, they could probably go to the likes of JP Morgan Chase or Goldman through a traditional IPO, but they don't want to deal with the volatility. When you don't have to deal with volatility in the market, you can go to a SPAC and say, I will just sell all my shares at a preset price that I don't have to go on the roadshow and then adjust the pricing to all these different types of investors. That's the volatility that these companies are trying to avoid when they go through a route like this as opposed to a traditional IPO. It remains to be seen how long this trend will go. I think it's more tied to what's happening in the VIX than it is about the size of these companies. Well, and Brian, I think it's worth bringing up as well a point that Kathleen Smith of Renaissance Capital mentioned yesterday on the show. She, of course, is an expert in initial public offerings, and she threw a little shade at SPAC, saying that they don't um, get the same kind of regulatory scrutiny that IPOs do from the SEC because they don't go through that same process. So that's just something to keep in mind as well. As an investor, you're putting a lot of trust in the people who put this back together to do that due diligence for you rather than the SEC. Although any investment you make, you should probably do some of your own yourself. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day wherever you are.